Hi, Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Mm. I have a good word right now. This is one of my favorites. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 54 through 58, followed by Pat's Two Cents. <clears throat> So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the, str and the strength of sin is is the law. But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. Now, I hope that's encouraging to you, Pat's two cents. Mm -hmm. Listen here. All right. Now, I got a message. I won't go into detail. Very deep situation. And I believe many of you have suffered from this in one way or another. When you have a loved one in your family that goes down a bizarre path that you never saw coming. <laughs> you have to remain steadfast, unmovable. You can't afford to lose hope, not now, because you are the only lifeline left for that person to be able to come back to the Lord. But the best way you will do it is through prayer, not through jabbering, calling, sending text messages, through prayer. This is something you have to lean back as hard as it is to do. And allow God to do the intervening. You intervene in prayer while God intervenes for them. Now, before you get panic-stricken and think, oh, no, this is a lost cause. How could they ever come back from that? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Nothing is impossible with God. Flip that around. With God, all things are possible. Now, God doesn't just look at sin. He looks at what caused the sin. That's what I love about God. Man judges the outward appearance. God judges the heart. So, knowing that God is in control and God is all-knowing and all-powerful to get the job done, when you're in that situation... I know it's painful for you. Now, I'm dealing more with you because you're the one standing there with your jaw dropped all the way to the ground wondering, what? What just happened? Yeah, well, Satan just happened and they went for the okie doke. That's all. But remember, greater is God that is in you than he that's in the world. Now, you are going through a lot of pain right now. You're going through a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety, a lot of worry, trying to figure this thing out. Stop it. You have to sit in God's face now. Now is the time to draw real close to God. And you have to constantly ask him to fill you with his joy, 
Why? The joy of the Lord will be your strength. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. Listen to this. You have to relinquish all of your rights. Now, this is what I mean. This is how you're going to make it through this. My heart really went out when I heard, you know, when I read the comment. It is heartbreaking. I had an ex-husband uh, at the time when, I, when we were married. After the second month of our marriage, he started committing adultery with prostitutes. He was hooked on pornography. But let me tell you, this is why I'm telling you to do what I'm going to tell you in a minute. Even though it hurt, even though I felt so betrayed, I was dumbfounded, I couldn't figure out how could this have happened? Where did this come from? Asked, this is what I had to do. After three years of turning into the Goodyear blimp, way bigger than I am now, believe it or not, from obsessively eating through my emotions, that experience was a very dark period for me. As a newlywed, who you talk about a slap in the face. But this is what God did for me. After three years, it dawned on me. The scripture that Jesus quote, I mean the scripture that was written from Jesus' quote, where he said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now that may be a loose quote, but just, just I'm just emphasizing what I wanted to say right there. When Jesus takes it, it's not heavy on you anymore. It's no longer there for you to carry. Now, what I did with this adulterous situation, seeing my ex-husband masturbate under the blanket rather than have sex with me, it was like a real slap in the face. But this is what I did after three years. I went outside under the moonlight in the starlit sky, and I talked to God. And I said, Lord, I have carried this long enough. Thinking of that scripture, come unto me, all ye that labor. Now, I said, Lord, I have been battling this. I have been carrying it. It has been eating me up alive. I am so sorry for even dealing with this like that. But I need to give this to you before it destroys me. Would you please take it off my hands? And this is what I did. Do this, please. I'm telling you, it makes all, all the world a difference. Here is my hurt. Here is my feelings of betrayal. Here are my insecurities because of what happened. Here is my jealousy. Here's my worry. Here's my husband. Take him and his pornography. It's yours. I can't deal with it. It's weighing me down. I don't want to be buried under this. I don't want it to be my problem anymore. Let this remain his problem until you deliver him. Let it, not, let it no longer be my problem. In the name of Jesus, I pray. After I said that, I said a few other words. I came inside, sat down. I was watching TV. About maybe 12.30 in the morning, whatever time. It was really late. In walks Hubs. Hubs walks in. Real obvious he wore his feelings on his face. I knew he had been where he had no business being. He had, I'm guilty. I've been screwing a prostitute. I feel like crap. He would always feel like crap after the dastardly deed was done. When I saw the look on his face, 
I'm thinking to myself, where is the hurt? Where is the feeling of betrayal? I just had it two hours ago. It's, oh, I gave it to God and it's gone. It really is gone from that day on. No more. I, I, let me tell you, I lived my life. I had a ball. I enjoyed my friendships. My friend Eleanor and I would go all over the place. My friend Pat and I chit-chatting over the phone. I would hang out with the, the ladies I used to call the Golden Girls <laughs> from our church. We all hung out. We had a ball. I just enjoyed my life. I moved on down the road, baby. And it was no longer my problem. Now, let me tell you, only God can do that. When nothing changes, when the situation is the same, and at times get when it's getting worse, God touches you, things get better and better and better. So then Psalms 91 comes into play. A thousand shall fall at thy hand, and ten thousand at thy right side. But it shall not come nigh thee. It's almost like God makes us immune to the cares of this world. He can do it. No medicine, no psychiatrist, nothing else can do this. God can do it. And if he did it for me, I know he can do it for you. So go to God, give him your list, everything on your list, hand to him one by one, and walk away, baby. Leave it behind you, and your life will have a brand new fresh start with a brand new Holy Ghost spark. God bless you. Be comforted. Listen, God is able. Amen.